Welcome to the latest episode of the Influencers series. This video will look at a very significant Greek philosopher, Parmenides of Elia, and how his thinking has influenced the world. For example, there are elements of his thinking that appear in Hindu texts and vice versa. Did one or both influence the other via the transmission of ideas, or is this simply a case of great minds thinking alike? I'll cover this in the second half, but let's start with the man and his thinking. According to Aristotle, Parmenides studied under Xenophanes, whom I covered in the previous video. The thinking of Xenophanes is clearly evident in that of his pupil. Parmenides was also the founder of the Eleatic school, which produced Zeno of Elia and his famous paradoxes. Most importantly, Parmenides is considered among the first to formulate arguments for the nature of being, or ontology, and the nature of things, known as metaphysics. Most importantly for history, Parmenides was influential in shaping the thinking of Aristotle and Plato, and thus on European history through their influence on Catholic scholasticism. In opposition to the Ionians who prized observation of the natural world to form a hypothesis, the Eleatics favored reason, or logos, over observation as the senses can be deceived. I will skip the justifiably accurate critique of this reasoned approach by the Eleatics, as it can be rather dry and boring, and I have to save some content for the book from which the content of these videos is taken. The concept of using rationalizations over observation thus was used to strengthen theistic arguments which had the effect of moving Logos into the realm of divinity. This approach would be followed for Plato's craftsman and Aristotle's unmoved mover to rationalize the existence of the gods. Later, the Logos concept would be morphed when Jesus was raised to the status of a god in the Gospel of John. In the beginning was the Word, or Logos, and the Word was God. In his book On Nature, Parmenides famously writes, It is necessary to say and to think that what is, is, for it is to be, but nothing it is not. These things I bid you ponder. This type of speculation falls under the monadic category of metaphysics. In Greek philosophy, the monad was represented as a circle with a dot in the middle. This monadic dot represented the divine origin of all things and is a central premise of ontological and cosmological arguments which attempt to infer the existence of the gods from nature. Scholars disagree over exactly what type of monist Parmenides was, but agree that he, like the pre-Socratic Ionians, challenged the traditional anthropomorphic understandings of the gods in seeking to explain nature and its origins. However, philosophy professor John Palmer notes that Parmenides never, in the surviving fragments, called the what is divine. Rather, Parmenides simply listed the attributes required for what must be, minus any traditional features of the gods. Further, many scholars have noticed a resemblance between a passage in the Bhagavad Gita and the what is of Parmenides. That which is can never cease to be, that which is not will not exist. Given the ties which developed between Greece and India in the wake of Alexander's conquest of the Indus Valley, some think the author of this passage could potentially have been influenced by Parmenides. Though contested, most scholars place the composition of the Bhagavad Gita to around 200 BCE, centuries after Parmenides and about a century after Alexander. McKeevely notes a similar passage in one of the Upanishads. The various Upanishads span centuries, but many scholars date this one to the first half of the first millennium, possibly as early as the 800s BCE, predating Parmenides. The relevant passage is from a discussion between a sage and his son over comprehending how the universe could be born out of nothingness. However, McKeevely notes a key difference between the two systems of thought, as the earlier Upanishad just provides a rhetorical observation and does not provide any logical reason for existence coming into being, which Parmenides does attempt to do. McKeevely grants that the non-being idea likely developed in India long before Parmenides, but only Parmenides attempted to provide a structured explanation for being. Whether monism originated in or was transmitted to Greece from other cultures remains a matter of scholarly debate, particularly as Parmenides developed his monist concept 200 years before Alexander's contacts with India, which does not preclude its possible transmission to him via the Persians. If you would like to get more background on the Persian links to Greece, you might like to watch my video on the history of how the world became secular, which provides an overview of these connections and their later impacts. 
So, we can see how Parmenides had a huge impact on history. His ideas on being and the Logos may have influenced both Hindu and Christian theologies respectively. Further, his thinking was influential on Plato and Aristotle, and both of them had their ideas absorbed into Christian scholasticism. But the idea of the Logos, its being transformed into human terms, and the influence that would have on the development of Christianity is the greatest impact Parmenides and the Eleatics would have on world history. Thanks for watching. Please check out the other videos on my channel if history is your thing, and see you next time.